How is it going everybody? Welcome back to another Pygame and Python programming tutorial. In this video, we're going to get into something super duper cool that makes your game and your code and your program kind of look a little bit more like a platformer. Because we're finally going to be introducing the scrolling platformer, where it kind of looks like you're moving around a world that will follow you as you, you, as you progress further and further through the level. So, the way that we do that is pretty simple. But first, you have to understand this concept that this doesn't really happen with the player. Like, the, the player will keep moving, obviously, but the player doesn't move further and further through the screen because the screen is a static, defined, like, width and height, you know? At the very, at the very start of our program, when we have our, our main function, we're setting the window width and the window height to 640 and 480. Obviously, that can't change, so, well... If, if you have that rationale, how does this happen? The player can't move further than the dimensions that we kind of allocate for it, so how does it look like we're moving all around this world that is apparently bigger than what we can see? Well, here's a fascinating thing, and you, you might kind of resonate with it, because often people will tell you, like, hey, John, the world doesn't revolve around you. Shut up. Stop your whining. But the thing is... In two-dimensional games, and in Pi Game, and the, the way that we're actually building this, that's kind of the way that it works. The world does revolve around you. The world does revolve around me. The world does revolve around the player. Now, when I say that, that means that as the player gets closer and closer to one edge of the screen, if we move further and further along, everything in the world will move according to how the player is moving. And there's a way that that actually all happens. So it's not in our player object, it's not obviously in the other blocks or the way that we do things in, in the other platforms and things in the game. It is in the level. It is in the world. It's in the way that we're actually in, inherited and in, in, inside the map. So, in the constructor of our level, let's set up a few new variables. I'm going to call mine self.worldshift. And I'm actually going to call mine shelf.worldshiftx, because let's work with the horizontal direction first. Right now, that's going to be zero. And this variable, this world shift, is going to equal the change, or how far we've really moved according to the original position in our world. Right now, this is zero. Now, scrolling, we actually kind of have a view. And that's that box, or the, the, the square that you see the world through, that's following the player. Now, if we have boundaries, like if one player, if the player moves too far to the right side of the screen, if it crosses that right boundary, it'll start to move. So, we, this of course applies for, the, for left and for up and down and that sort of thing, but the point that I'm trying to get across to you is that there are boundaries. There is a view box that we're actually kind of setting up here. Now, I'm going to set mine kind of relative to the size of the screen. So let's set this up, in, at least in the horizontal direction. Let's say self left view box is going to equal to, like I said, I'm going to be using the, these things relative to the screen. Window width divided by 2. Let's have half of that. Divided by window width divided by 8. So half of the screen subtract a little bit, I'm going to use 8, not 18, sorry, subtract a little bit more of whatever the window width actually is. Now, when I use write, self.write, that's going to be window width divided by 2 plus window width, and then I'll actually use 18. No, in fact, I'll use 10, because 18 is kind of very, very tiny. This now allows for uh, less change in the right direction and more change in the left direction because the game kind of moves to the right at least initially. That's the way that I kind of at least envision a game. In a platformer you always see to, seem to have the player moving in the right direction as they progress further and further through the level. So that's all the variables that we need so far. We need a world shift that'll keep track of how far we've really changed things, and this left view box and this right view box that are going to act as our boundaries. Okay, let's continue. Our update function will work just fine, and our draw function will work just fine. Um, but what if we gave this another function? What if we had a function that was like shift world? I, I would call this change world, but then it'd be like, yeah, my, my program changed the world. 
<laughs> Look, guys, I made a funny joke. Uh, we have a we have a shift function. We have a shift world function, and right now we're going to have that shift. We're gonna, it's going to take a new variable called shift x. Once we continue, we are going to have it uh, have shift y, but we're also going to have a world shift y along with that. So for now, we're just going to use shift x. I will actually show you how to use shift y in in this same video. It's it's very very simple. You're practically just duplicating the code, but world shift x. We're going to work with our self.worldshiftx. We're going to add whatever we're shifting. Shift.x. The variable that we just created, self.worldshiftx, we're going to keep track of that variable in this function, and we're actually going to add whatever we pass to the function. Now, this is where we actually have to keep control of all of the other objects and platforms in the level. So, we do that by looping through all of the objects I'm going to say each object so it doesn't look like a type. For each object in this level, in the self, in this level's object list, we're going to say each object, its actual rectangular position, its rect x, is going to be added to by, of course, shift x. Nice, right? And that's all that we actually have to do for now. But that's what's shifting everything in the world. We have to keep track of whether or not the player has moved through the boundaries or not. That's going to be another new function. I'll call mine run view box. You can call yours whatever you want. Maybe it can be like scroll or run camera. It's, it's whatever. It's just going to take one argument, obviously self, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an object. And this is where we actually test the player's position. Now, because we have access to the player in this level, we also have a we have a self dot player object. That's what we're going to use. Self dot player object. It's x position. If it's less than or equal to self dot left view box. Well, guys, what what do you think we should do? I know you can guess it. We're going to have a view difference, and that view difference is the change. It's going to be the offset, the difference between our view box and the player's x position. So I'm going to copy this right up here because I don't really want to type all that. Okay, I guess I'm not going to copy that. FML. <laughs> Let's try one more time. Copy that code and paste it right there. This is the difference. This is the change between how far we have, we are able to go to the left, and how far we have gone to the left. Now, this is what's going to make up for the world difference. We're actually going to run our self.shift world with this view difference. But how do we stop the player from moving that far to the left? Well, we set up that view boundary, didn't we? We have the left view box. And I'm sure you guys know how this works. Let's actually stop the player in his movement. Let's say player object dot rec dot x can equal the left view box. He stops at that boundary. Nice. Now, what about the right direction? Well, it's the same exact code, except it's the other way around. If it's greater than the, than the right view box, well, now we're going to be using the right view box over and over and over again. Rather than left, it's going to be right but we're still changing with the world difference. Cool. Now that all that has happened, um, we don't have any more code to run in the uh, level object or the level 01 object, but we do, however, need to incorporate this view box in our game running loop. So, remember, we added this section, or this kind of category for the logic and the things that actually happen. Well, let's do current level run view box. <laughs> let's see what happens. Let's run the code. Hopefully no errors. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully no errors. Yeah. All right, cool. So now we've got my little character here. I can move left and right. And ooh, ooh, ooh the whole world moves around him. It almost looks like there's a camera following him. And I jump down. Whoa. I'm over here now. Well, when I jumped, when I jumped down, we didn't see any change vertically. Why is it? I can still jump off the screen. Whoa! Why is that? Why isn't the camera following me? 
Keep in mind, we didn't actually add support for the vertical direction yet. But this is super duper easy, right? We just we just wrote all the code for this. All we have to do is add a few new variables and a few new tests. Self.shift.y, all right, yeah, that can equal the same thing. Initially, that's going to be zero. And let's add some new variables. Let's say, okay, we've got, we've got left and right. What if we had up and down? That's, of course, going to be using the world height, the window height. And I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be using, um, up, up is going to be four. I'm not going to subtract anything from that. And let's say down can equal white dot two plus window height dot 12. I divided by 12, okay. I think those are some good numbers. You can play around with it and, and test for the camera that you really want, but for now that works just fine for me. And in our shift world, let's add that new variable. Let's go shift dot y, shift underscore y, and da 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 do the same sort of manipulation that we have here. Do the same thing in the Y direction. In the run view box, we have new tests to make. We'll test for left, uh, now that we've tested for left and right, let's test for up and down. If it's less than up, you know what we do? We use up and Y, Y, up. And keep in mind, since we're using a shift world function, now that we just added a new variable for that, we're not going to do anything in the y direction, sorry, in the x direction, we are going to do things in the y direction. We have to account for this in the other function calls that we've done. This is all in the x direction, not in the y direction, so these are going to be 0, x direction, not y. In this case, y, not x. Let's make the change for the other one, self.down view box. Super cool, super duper cool. All right, now let's run this code. See what happens. Boom. Okay, cool. Now it looks like my screen is kind of blank. It looks like oh, I can jump and everything. Cool. It looks like I'm only on one platform, but we know we can move around and the camera will follow us. We know because we have that other one down there. If we jump down, wow! <laughs> I, I overshot it. I jumped past it. I'm dead now. You saw the, the platform just fly by us because the camera is happening and we're, of course, subject to gravity. Let's try it one more time. Hopefully I can make the jump this time. Here I am in my, in my world. I can jump down. Whee! And I can land on this block over here. I'm actually going to maybe tighten the down difference or up difference. I, I don't know which one I want to work with. But what if we did... When I jump, I want it to move back down. I want it to like we did eight. If I come into that whole section, what if I just went halfway? Cool. That works kind of well. I shrink this down to three. I can jump up and jump back down. So it looks like I'm moving higher. It all depends on the kind of game feel you want your game to have. Maybe that's too much for you. Maybe that's not enough. Maybe I can go 5 and go back go back to 10, the way that we had it before, or 12. It's, it's entirely up to you, and that's the best part about programming your own thing, is that you can make this however you want it. And I can, of course, jump down in other positions. And we can add as many blocks as we'd like to the world because of the, the setup that we added and how we organized the code beforehand. And now we have a scrolling window, scrolling platformer. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you understand everything that we covered in this video. And uh, we're going to move into some really cool stuff next. So, thanks. <laughs> See you again.